Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 8.30 to 9 a.m. session of the 2021 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation, Painting in the Meta. Our speaker is Kizma Rilin, a.k.a. Julieta Surreal Dreaming. And Kizma is a mixed media artist who is a graduate teacher of international creativity. She's a red thread guide and a certified cosmic smash book teacher. She offers classes in a mixed media, art journals, and altered books. Sounds like a lot of fun to me. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios and details of this session and a full schedule of the further events coming up for this conference. The session is being stream live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you can send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC21. And if you're in world, you can direct message me any questions and I will ask them to Julieta when she finishes. So welcome everybody. Let's begin the session. Julieta, I turn it over to you. Thank you, Meg. And thank you, OSCC. You guys are awesome for doing this every year and I am very honored to be here. So I stand here before you today as Kizma Reedling speaking to you from my art studio in Newport Beach, California. And I would love to share a bit about transitions from real life to virtual virtual to real life as an artist and I would like to tell a little story so I'm going to go back to about 2020. Now I was an artist enjoying my own creativity giving art classes three times a week at a local art studio as well as in my home studio where I did occasional workshops and just had fun, you know, with students and um, lots and lots of creativity on weekends. And I had been accepted that year into two different exhibitions that were going to be happening later in the year. Now, here's the thing. Uh, COVID happened, right? COVID happened. And all of a sudden... Uh, it seemed like in the course of, uh, what, like a week for all of us, the rest of the world and I went into home sanctuary mode and found ourselves with a new existence. Mine was as a solo artist in residence. And uh, at, at that time, both studios shut down. So I turned to technology, of course. Well, me and millions of other people. For several years prior to lockdown, I'd been offering how-to uh, extra backup art videos on YouTube for my paying art students, but they were all gone now. So I turned to amping everything up. I went in and I padded my website and I started doing YouTube live stream uh, to replace the classes, the live classes. And I added Zoom and put uh, self-paced video courses on my website and I set up Twitch and I set up Instagram and TikTok and opened a new Facebook account just for art courses and an art community. And within five months, I found that just about any art technique a person could ever want to learn had saturated YouTube. And there were umpteen new class communities, art communities springing up mostly for women. And these women artists gobbled up the courses. And in, in fact, my own Facebook art community grew to 70 women in less than a week. But those same 70 women joined hundreds of other Facebook communities. And quickly, these artists became like junkies enrolling in four and five plus online courses at the same time. Even if some were on the same day and same time of week. So, out of nowhere, this is how I felt at that time, out of nowhere, there also came an art student expectation, a sense of entitlement that if a person couldn't make your class that week, that 
as an art teacher, you would have a recording for them to watch at their convenience at a later time. So it became more about making videos, editing, uploading. Time was suddenly added to our teaching time. And within the first nine months of lockdown, I and other art teachers became slaves to our newly created ADHD art students. We were responsible for that. Our own personal art practices became secondary and uh, was quite a disarming experience and situation for a creative to find herself in. Though exponentially art courses flooded the internet and an outpouring of more students than could ever be imagined sprang up. And though this seems a wow, mind you, the entire art world turned upside down, of course, and all these courses, or most of them, because there was just as many new art teachers springing up online, were offering their courses for free. The market became a competition, give free, give recordings, or else, thus no income. Okay. So my story reflects a lot of similar stories. We all had to scramble. And I'd bet that every single person up here today, though already involved virtually, were totally impacted by COVID and forced to take a large portion of our professions to virtual or go out of business. Welcome to the new world, right? Sink or swim. Well, for me, the dilemma. Now, I've been in virtual worlds, namely SL, since 2009, living as Julieta Sorrell Dreamy, role-playing as an art gallery owner, a curator for what I'd always deemed as virtual artists, virtual fantasy artists, who are known as pseudo photographers. Their art is photos taken around Sims, tweaked with a photo app, slapped onto a prim, hung on a showroom or gallery wall, and voila, art exhibition SL style. Everyone loves fantasy role play. That's why we came to virtual worlds for a while, right? Well, during my role play time, I had been happy to support the fantasy of SL artists. For you see, my mindset didn't even consider me being an SL artist, let alone bringing my real life art in. I mean, why would I ever want to bring my art in, pop it on a canvas prim, and show it in a fantasy exhibition in a fantasy world? My art wasn't a fantasy. For me, it was real life. Plus, why on earth would I ever want to let anyone know my real identity in a fantasy world? Well, the COVID transition happened. And last year, the same thing at the same time, perhaps some of you remember, I stood here as an artist, adding my real life name to my virtual name. And yes, I'd made the transformation to show my real life art, to have my art seen by possible patrons. I didn't care anymore what reality my viewers were in. I just wanted to share my art. Plus, the role play had ended for me because by April 2020 due to the unpredictable nature of the world and my almost lack of total income and for how long I realized I needed to cut back I really couldn't afford to keep the land my SL gallery was on so I shut it down and I began to turn all my attention to Art Blues projects. And we did migrate Surreal Art Gallery to H.G. Hopper's Craft World, but due to everything, I wasn't in the mood to break into a new art scene virtually. 
Plus, it already had a really healthy Italian art group established and fully operational. So we sat on it, and it's still empty today. So here's my quandary. I was... I was going through having those art shows canceled and both of them canceled in the same week, okay? Of course, the explanation given was due to COVID. So by summer 2024, I was constantly feeling stagnant and constantly eyeing those 15 canvases stacked against the wall in a corner of my studio. And I became depressed and started having really bizarre thoughts like, do I bring my real life art into SL and open Sims? Do I start painting in Meta? Do I create an avatar for me, for Kisma Reedling, if I do this? Do I blur the line between virtual and reality? Oh my God, will this make me go crazy? Maybe I am crazy. So, Art Blue and I discussed it and decided, yes, I was crazy. No, we decided that I should go forward with the new plan. So, I set up a Kisma KSR Avatar and SL, uploaded those 15 newly painted, never before seen by anyone pieces, slapped them on prims while making some inquiries with a few SL galleries and within 30 days had my first exhibition. But I, I couldn't just be an SL artist because I, I'm a real life artist. I paint. So I joined real life with SL galleries and within 30 days I had that first exhibition scheduled <laughs> no it's me saying it now here's what we did here's exactly what we did i invited lots of friends from real life to come into a zoom opening with me while i had an avatar standing in sl in that art gallery and i had created two little art patron accounts for potential real life guests you know the ones who were courageous enough to log in and experience the environment firsthand um and you know what it worked it really worked being in sl at my exhibit opening in my avatar and in a zoom share e screen event with real life people at the same time it was kind of funny i mean it was successful all my paintings in sl sold at the opening in sl i only sell one piece of each piece of art just like real life and in real life, I actually sold four pieces from that. And I repeated the same step for other events. And all of them were successful. So we decided in 2022 that we are going to begin sort of a new little business where we're offering real life virtual art gallery openings for people. And I began to talk with Art Blue about it. And uh, we began to look at how to make it easy for visitors, like real life art patrons, to come in to world, you know, come in world to events like an art show, a grand opening, OSCC, without feeling so overwhelmed because the current viewers we use are way too complicated for just a visitor. There's too many options, too many menus, and just crazy busy. We learn the mechanics of how to do real life SL exhibition open openings, but we lacked that one important thing, the temporary baby guest viewer. Now, Art has something he's going to say now. So um, I'm going to just step back. And as he shares with us, I am going to um, play on the screen, I hope, uh, the a video of that first little um, experience. Let me get up to that. Sorry, you guys. I kind of fell behind. Um, 
Let me find it. Where is it? You guys look at how far behind I fell. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, let's see if this will do it. All right, Marcus, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in now. I should have had this done. I thought I had it done. Okay, I put the URL, of course. And here we go. Let's see if this works. Hopefully everybody can see it. And let me get rid of these commercials. Okay, and Art, there you go. It's all yours. Please welcome Art Blue. Thank you, Kisma. Question is, how can people who are using the computer on a Microsoft Office level, managing a browser, managing email, and Skype and Zoom, just to give two examples, to be led, to be guided into the meta. So we, the Open Simulator community, will profit from it. I'm speaking on this subject with Kisma for some time. She invited me to put some thoughts into it that I will happily present. I'm not only working in the field of the arts, I'm also working in organizations where Open Simulator is being promoted to be used in schools. It would extend this talk to bring all the facets that come from this field up now on the table. So I go on what Kisma experienced as the difficulties with her two art patron avatars. One avatar was stuck in a corner in the gallery and jumped up and down until finally managed to turn. And the other art patron avatar could not make it into the elevator to go up. You will see it in the video of the elevator. It was hard to see how much a visitor user struggles with the Firestorm viewer. So many options, menus, buttons, and also possible visual configurations make it difficult to handle the situation individually and also, just as a side mark, to teach Open Simulate in a classroom, which must include teaching of the viewer. Some of you may remember we spoke one year ago about America Art also to meet in Verbella and in Frame VR. We said we need to have a browser for meeting in a virtual world to attract new contributors. We need to go this way. We need an interface or very light viewer to bridge into Open Simulator for visitors. Kisma calls them art patrons to avoid the plain terms clients, customers, or buyers. Students, okay. Maybe it's time to give focus on it once more. I'm willing to donate $2,000 upfront for such a light viewer. I have an idea for a name and an icon that comes, that comes from the arts. It was once a very big movement in Second Life that some may remember. It was Art in Heads, which ended in 2015. Heads have a spiritual dimension that goes by the golden head excavations. A head embodies a link to the higher knowledge. Okay, I should know where such a head. Just seek for the golden head in Wikipedia and you will find golden heads have been created over 3000 years ago. An avatar being created with this viewer will always wear a golden head as a start, as a contribute to the early creativity of mankind looking beyond reality. Any developer interested to work on this private project with the trajectory of presenting the, presenting the result in one year from now on, and OSCC 22 maybe, please contact me or Giulietti uh, immediately. <laughs> so back to Kisma, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Art Blue. And thanks to all of you. Thank you for listening. Come visit the Surreal Museum here at OSCC that I curate. I've added new pa uh, pieces to the collection, as well as a few new gifts. And please come to Art Blue's talk tomorrow, which will lead into the sharing of our current fantastic art project. And we also are offering an experience at the lunch break for about 20 minutes of it. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask unless we're out of time. You can always I'm me and then I'll be at lunch break at Region 3, Booth 7. 
uh, today. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Meg. Thank you, OSCC staff. I'm I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kizma and Art Blue. You know, it's a great thing because I too have been in SL and I went in there specifically to start art gallery. So I know the whole dilemma of trying to get that uh, regular life into a virtual space. And uh, I, I feel it. I feel it. I'm looking forward to your, your golden hat. Let's see what it does. All right. As a reminder of our, to our audience, uh, you'll want to check out conference.opensimulator.org to see what's coming up on the conference schedule. Following this session, we have a break, and the next session begins at 9.30 a.m. and is entitled Virtual Worlds Education Consortium Across the Metaverse. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 21 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the hypergrid resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with sponsor and crowd founder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. You know, the best way to do this, this is what I love to do, is just open your map, zoom in on one of the regions, and click and go. That's how easy it is. So, you know, explore, jump back and forth. You'll have a lot of fun. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you at 9.30 a.m. for our next session.